Hello and welcome. It's another edition of Eyewitness Report on Channel's television. This edition of the program takes us on a surge to three regions of the country as we reveal details of pictures of the bad state of roads worsened by dredging activities in Magburu, Ogun State, and how the West African Examination Council in Calabar Cross River State is bouncing back from the losses it incurred in the fallout of the NSAS agitation, as well as in Kajuru local government area of Kaduna State where ruins of ethno-religious conflicts are being replaced by impactful projects. Details of this shortly. I am Jomi Otaibi. At least 10 communities in Magboro in Obafemi Awode local government area of Ogun State are experiencing so much discomfort accessing the only route to their homes. The Sele Abuleoko Gaun Road has been made almost impassable by the influx of trucks conveying sand from the dredging site. The activities have also left other public infrastructure at a near collapse. Caught in the middle of Ogu and Lagos State, Magboro is about 15 meters drive to the buzzing city of Ikeja, the capital of Lagos State, much more closer to a metropolis than Abelkuta, the capital of Ogun State where it belongs. Sharing boundaries with Ibafo, Mowe, Akute and Arepo, Magboro is one of the fastest growing urban communities in Obafemi Wode local government area. Now, the peaceful and fast-developing area is turning out to be a hell for residents of the community. Infrastructure challenge may have been with the people for a long time. Dredges activities are worsening their pain with the influx of trucks conveying sand from mining sites within the locality. A visit to Sele Abuleoko Gaon Road gives us a clearer picture into what the people are faced with on a daily basis. <laughs> Vehicles contending with trucks on a road that has suddenly become a death trap the residents want a way out. This road is important because it's the one that takes us in into Abuloko and to another community, different communities in this area. We have about 10 communities here, even down to Gong there. So the road is very, very important because this is the only road that uh, people ply to be able to get even to their various uh, places. The major challenge at the moment is that the road is terribly bad because it has never been like this before. For the past two years now, we have been suffering. Every year we grade this road at least twice in a year to make it uh, comfortable for our people. But suddenly when the dredging company came in, they, they came in with their trucks about more than 200 trucks ply this road every day and as a result of that they damage the road for us and people are not happy people are suffering cars are being damaged on daily basis and the people cannot that need to go to their, to their place of work early find it difficult even Okada people have used to come to our community and the, those that are coming are charging us exorbitant prices those that have been charging 50 naira before now escalated into about 300 naira per day so it is telling on us, telling on the heads of our people because of the bad road. That's why we are outside, to call on government to please to come and help us to be able to talk to these people so that they can fix our road. We have been doing it all by ourselves. And, uh, but now it's as if uh, we, are the, we, we can't uh, help it again. There's um, a public notice there of a road project. Yes. What is that about? That's an evidence to you that uh, we do it with our, by, by community effort. 
we, 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 at, a, at a point in time when these people were not doing this for us, we decided we are, we are going to fix the road by ourselves and we contributed money to begin to put culverts on the road and to begin to fix this bad spot. But when we came in that day, we, we couldn't continue because uh, they insisted that they must ply the road even when we gave them notice enough that we want to do it, that they should step aside. They didn't allow us. So the road, they left the road even the way it is and then we are still, the, the suffering continues. Ibaye Miojo speaks on how the road affects him as a motorist and as a parent. I have two cars. Out of the two cars, I can't drive any now. Both have broke down. The uh, bottom plates have already damaged. The two of them now are packed home. Two, because of the state of the road now, Okada cannot come in easily. Even to take our children to school becomes difficult. Most especially when it rains. When it rains, all of us will be stuck here. If we children going to school, all of us will be stuck there. Because we won't be able to move on. Most of us here, we are working in Lagos. And we have to leave very early and come back late. So to even go out becomes a very difficult thing. Because when you get out of this place, your time is already spent here. Most of, the, most of us have lost our job because of this bad, uh, bad road. To take our children to school becomes, becomes an, a serious issue. Sometimes we use this alternative uh, route. Now, most often when the, uh, the, the pressure is more on this road, they lock the gate. And when they lock the gate against us, because they are not using this road, they are using the, the other one there. When they lock it against us, it becomes an issue here. So all of us, we can pack here. Going to work making it difficult. Going to school, difficult. Even back at women, you find it very, very, very difficult, as you can see. Nobody can pack here and say we want to buy things. Because when they fall, this place becomes a water lock. And they, they, when they now come in, they put big, big, big stones just to enable their own truck to pass and make cars, the movement of cars, difficult. Residents claim that over the years they've put in hard earned resources into maintaining the road and managing the situation, but the dredges have become a clog in their wheel of progress. According to them, the company disregards any form of notification from the community. Neither does it get actively involved in road repairs. Actually, before we commenced on this project, we did a lot of awareness. We wrote letters to the company in question, uh, the Capital Waves Company. We wrote to the ballers in the community. We wrote to the local government. We wrote to the, uh, the, the police. We, you know, we just dispersed it to all the quarters necessary so that they'll be informed of our intention to embark on a road project because if you look at it, we had to cut it into two. But you see, the road backing you is an alternative which we created for vehicular movement. So you come from that side, you come out here and you move because we know we can't restrict people from going in and out of the community. But we did that to enable us to achieve this goal. So 26th of uh, June, we created our awareness. We put, if you go around, you see our sign post on the road to create awareness that look, we are doing this. We, printed out flyers, we distributed it um, widely. Um, then we commenced on the project. Why it became abandoned was because on the day we commenced on the project, the company in question came and stopped us and said that, uh, in fact, raised, brought in a lot of thugs and even went further to arrest us because they took us, reported us at the Bafo police station and we had to go to them to meet with the DPO. And after a lot of discussion, the DPO made it clear that, look, you have to uphold your own end of the CSR. These people are right. And we left there. The DPO advised us to also see the KBAC of Gon, the Oba of Gon. We went there. The KBAC repeated the same thing the DPO said. That, look, you, you must go and uphold the CSR in the community. So we left it up there and they promised that they were going to do this. You know, all we found out was that the day we, what we agreed, they will do one side and, uh, you know, people will take the, 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 we keep using that site. Look at it here today. They came with those things, put it there, put the pipe, put sand on it, and left it and went away. So up till date, it's abandoned. Even though they've agreed that they were going to do it. And that's just a few. Because um, part of their agreement also, we looked at two, we looked at two um, um, ways of handling the, the community um, pro problem in terms of this road. We talk about the temporary measures, we talk about long-term measures. The temporary arrangement is what you are seeing, where we grade the roads maybe twice or whatever, you know, so that people can ha have free movement in the community. 
But for a permanent solution, they agreed they were going to do the drainages for starters, and then they were going to touch areas of the road that were very important areas. And we agreed, we said, no problem. And that agreement is already over one year ago that they, we, 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 uh, we, we, we reached that agreement. Up till today, they've not held their end. They just come, when there's a bad spot, they will come and pour sand or whatever. And just like what you are seeing, they just come and pour. Once they are comfortable with their truck's movement, that's all. Most businesses in Abulio Coal Road appear to have folded up as a result of the state of the road and the dangers inherent. Another area of worry for them is the impacts the dredging activities may have on the numerous electricity and telecommunication masts in Magboro. The dredging is uh, likely to affect the power base of the uh, power line that runs to, through this our community to Okearo. And we are so much concerned because we don't want uh, a calamity to befall this nation. Because if anything happens to the power line, the whole of the community around this area, up to Ibafo, may be in extinction. This dredging is not only uh, inside the river, but it is at the bed, under the bed of the, of the community. And if it happens that this thing is draining all the sand under the bed, it may affect the uh, power line and the power line may collapse any time from now. We are calling the government attention to see before this colossal damage affects the nation, not even Maguro alone. Before, have you reached out to the Ogun state government at all? Or have they said anything concerning this? Concerning the environmental impact assessment, yes, we haven't, but um, last month we made uh, our agitation known through the dailies where we told them that the way these dredgers are affecting our road, affecting, even polluting the environment through the noise, the fumes that comes out from their trucks, that they should come to our aid. Attempt to reach out to the dredging company was not successful. You said that you are here for three days. Three days? There's nothing they want to discuss with you. Look at the door here. At least go and meet with Let us go. Please. No, no, no. Let us go. 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 Officials of the Environment Agency, who coincidentally visited the site, served the company an abatement notice. When you video, when you video for here, my pictures show inside. That is the problem. This is in response to several complaints from the community. In his response, the special advisor to the Ogun State Governor on Environment, Mr. Olaure Sonye, decries the level of degradation the community has been exposed to by sand miners and promised intervention of the state government. The initial benefit some people in the community were getting from those dredgers. There's a lot of government, this current government of the past, that's the story I had, whether true or false, I don't know, but, but with the present administration, we're not going to allow that. We're not going to allow the uh, the interest of a few people because of what they make to now cause problems for a larger number of people. So the government is here to protect the vulnerable. We need to protect the environment, we need to protect our people and make sure the well-being of our people, whether in the short term or medium or long term, is not jeopardized by the immediate benefits some people are get, getting. So you will see action very soon. While the activities of sand dredgers affect the communities negatively, the legality of the operation also comes to bear with the argument that they may be licensed by the federal government. If you look at um, the um, mining uh, law in Nigeria, there's a level of exclusivity that is given to the federal government to license uh, miners. Uh, but at the state level, we have a level of control also. Even if the federal government uh, give license, uh, at the state level, we have a responsibility of control. And I think um, uh, we are rising up to that responsibility uh, because, yes, we didn't give them license. We didn't license anybody out there. The federal government gave them license according to the law. But the law also permits us to control the, 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 the way our environment is used. So control of uh, what we do, the, the activities, both the, the impact of the transporters, and um, the impact on the well-being of our people 
it's our responsibility and we're not going to shy away from that. With the flooding season imminent, communities located along the Ogun River are often badly affected. Attention therefore must be paid to activities that directly affect the flow, composition and control of the water. The relevant authorities must step up its responsibilities of ensuring that no one is put in harm's way by the actions of a few. Welcome back. It's 10 months since the country witnessed a series of mass protests against police brutality and the disbanding of the special anti-robbery squad SARS. To date, some institutions of government and individuals are still struggling to bounce back from the losses owing to the destruction. Well, the West African Examination Council has decided to move on by giving a facelift to its regional office in Calabar, which was vandalized during the protest. This video shows the extent of damages done on the West African Examination Council work office in Calabar in the aftermath of the NSARS protest agitation allegedly hijacked by angry youths who looted and vandalized government offices and private businesses. Documents, furniture and vehicles, among others, were destroyed. To show a gesture of sympathy, the governor of Cross River State visited the scene of the attack. In the wake of the mayhem, Candidates have been exposed to long travels to other states to participate in the senior school certificate examination. However, with the restoration of the office, that will soon cease. In the name of the Father, Amen. and the Son, Amen. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Examination Council is gradually equipping the renovated office for furniture and new operational vehicles to enable its staff to settle down to work. We are all living witnesses to the events that took place on the 24th of October 2020 when the office was completely burnt down, vandalized with all the properties, the vehicles, office, uh, furniture and, and equipment, everything gone. So just bidding from the ashes again, um, from the little we had, we were able to get something to contract a contractor to do something and today we are seeing what he has done. We have completed the renovation work, 100%. The only items left are items of furniture and equipment. Yes, if you, if you go inside now you will see some chairs and tables. Um, you know, they stole everything, the computers, the air conditioners, the chairs, everything. So it will take us time to replace the air conditioners, to replace other items that we are stolen. But for now, we have been able to provide certain basic facilities to enable them to take off. Although it suffered physical damages, YX says its data and other electronically restored information are intact. We will recover everything. We have all the records. And I must tell you now that even the certificates that we have, we have reprinted all of them. We have, we have reprinted all of them because we have the database. We just record them from our database and we reproduce everything. This development also brings a huge relief on parents and other stakeholders in the education sector. The renovation of uh, YEC office, Calabar, is going to ease the smooth running of uh, YEG, especially the conduct of YEG examinations in the state, considering the terrain of Cross River State. So for us, assessing Uyo would have been very, very difficult. But that the office in Calabar, the state office has been renovated, is going to help us, it's going to ease the smooth conduct of YEG examinations throughout the state. While it sets out to put in place all that is needed to function optimally, the West African Examination Council says it seeks the support of the Cross River State Government to achieve this. With the new Kashuan Magani market, 
Kajiro community in Kaduna State also completed an aspect of rebuilding its economy in the aftermath of ethno-religious crisis of 2018. The new Kaswa Magani market offers a scenic view of a modern market in Kajiru, an agrarian community in Kaduna State. The demolition of the old market by the Kaduna State government in 2019 didn't come as a surprise as a large chunk of the market had suffered the brunt of decades of ethno-religious violence. Several shops, vehicles and other valuables were destroyed during a clash between youth of different religions. The crisis also left traders and shop owners devastated, having lost all their life savings in the crisis. In helping to rebuild the ruins, the Kaduna State Government embarked on the construction of an ultra-modern market in July 2019 on the same land where the old one existed. In a space of two years, the project is fully completed and about to be put to use. The state government says it's compelled to remodel the market after carrying out a holistic post-conflict assessment of the several crises that usually engulfs Kaswama Guinea and other parts of the state. Contestations about markets have been mentioned in several reports of commissions of inquiry into episodes of violent crisis in Kaduna. That those who do not have access to space in the market uh, add that lack of access to the grievances that uh, sometimes tend to poison intercommunal uh, relations and then has manifested into episodes of uh, conflict. So it was decided to rebuild Kasamagadi market, make it modern, and create more space within it so that those who have had stores in the market can be accommodated in the new market and those who aspire to have stalls, okay, and have the economic uh, resources to pay for those uh, stalls can also be accommodated. Um, as you have seen, it is now one of the um, best, if not the best, um, uh, public market in, in Cardinal State uh, because it's a conscious investment by the Cardinal State government into uh, rebuilding communal uh, relations and removing the tussle over market assets as a source of uh, conflict. The new market is designed to accommodate 2,024 lock-up shops against the 400 which normally stood there. Other facilities, including open shops, an abattoir, a clinic and a police post, have been put in place to ensure the comfort and security of traders. Whatever market we build, we try to build more than we removed to, to not only take the initial uh, people that were there, but to even allow for newcomers to come and join. So we need to make these markets more conducive to allow people to come in, people that actually want to buy, because Everyone knows that things are cheaper there, but um, people have been avoiding them only because uh, they do not feel safe and uh, comfortable going there. So we decided to rebuild and remodel most of these markets. Issues like parking that we always have, that's why you find markets looking very rowdy because people have to park outside, they were not designed with proper parking lots. Uh, we don't have um, fire trucks there, we don't have spaces, the roads were not designed to allow fire trucks going. So in instances where you have fire, sometimes there's a truck there ready to you know, fight the fire, but the, you can't even access those locations and people lose entire markets because of that. Kaswamagani, a community that's about 31 kilometers away from the state capital, is where the first ethno-religious crisis in the state occurred in 1989. It's therefore hoped that the remodeling of the market, which has been a major argument amongst contending ethnic groups, will go a long way towards restoring communal relations and providing economic opportunities for the residents. These stories are follow-ups to some of the pictures and videos you sent to us. So being our eyewitness reporter qualifies you as an important member of the production team so you can do more with your mobile devices. Those pictures you have could turn out unique stories about your environment. Simply post them on the Eyewitness portal via the Channels TV app, which you can download from the various app stores online, and we'll take up the story from there. Okay, talking about pictures, let's see the ones sent in for the week. The first set of videos in this segment of the program shows deserted streets in Josh Metropolis. They indicate the level of compliance to a 24-hour curfew 
imposed in just north local government area to forestall breakdown of law and order. The curfew was announced by the state government to check any form of unrest occasioned by the attack on travelers along Rukuba Road. At least 23 people were killed during the attack. The next videos from an eyewitness reporter convey the remains of vehicles gutted in a petrol tanker fire in the evening of Sunday, August 15, at Tazan Junction in Nepal, a dimly north local government area of Anambra State. The fire, according to the reporter, was caused by a collision involving a vehicle in motion with a stationary, fully loaded diesel tanker that had a tire problem. 17 vehicles were burned, including 13 luxury buses. At the time these pictures were sent, one body was recorded. Thank you for sharing those images with us. We hope to receive more from you. That's the show for this week. Thanks for watching. I am Jomi Otaibi.